Lord, if you can turn to Psalms uh, 116, how many are thankful for one more chance? Amen. By a show of hands, who in here could testify that you should have been dead and gone, but he kept you? Amen. Just look around. From here on, it's just bonus. He already saved my eternal soul. It, from here on, every day is a bonus. Hallelujah. Psalms 116 and 1 reads, I love the Lord. Somebody say, why? Turn to your neighbor and say, why do you love him? Because he hath heard my voice. Turn real fast to John 8 and 6. John the spiritual gospel, New Testament, John 8 and 6, real fast. It says, go to the part where it says, Jesus stooped down. We know the story. They brought the woman who was caught in adultery. And it says, Jesus stooped down. How many are grateful and thankful for a God who stooped down to your level? We serve a God who knows how to stoop down. Amen. Stoop down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. God knows how to strategically ignore us. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to talk for a few minutes on prayer. Hallelujah. A knucklehead in the prayer closet is better off than the slickest preacher. Hallelujah. Do you guys remember the country artist uh, uh, that sang, uh, Some of God's greatest gifts or unanswered prayers. Do y'all remember that? Garth Brooks. Y'all remember it. Don't act too dignified. I know you remember it. But Garth Brooks was on to something. Sometimes the greatest thing God can bless us with is withholding what we ask for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I use these two scriptures because David said, I love him because he heard my voice. Sometimes we think that God is absent when we don't get the answer we want. But it is so crucial that we lean on the fact he heard me. Oh, he heard me. Nobody can hear you like God can hear you. Something, uh, there's something so powerful about just being heard. When you're in the pain of your life, you don't need a saint or a loved one coming up to you with an answer. You just want to be heard. Hallelujah. Just like a marriage needs meaningful conversations, the church needs meaningful dialogue with God. Prayer is the breath of the church. If we aren't praying, then we are not breathing. Sister Burnett, said something, and I've, I've leaned on this. This is a phenomenal quote. She said, the more I pray, the more I want to pray. Some people haven't been in the prayer room in years, months, but if they just get a little taste of his presence again, I bet you something would ignite. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, he hears me. Hallelujah. The apostolic churches in our fellowship that I love and I want to give honor to all of our leaders. I love our fellowship. I love men and women who stand for truth, and they're paying a price so you and I can have it easy. Hallelujah. Our, I love our apostolic churches, but I am convicted, and I feel a, a richer calling to more prayer. Hallelujah. I believe our heads are hungrier than our hearts. I'm not going to mess with you too much. Somebody say, I love the Lord. Why? Because he heard my voice. The first mistake humans ever made was being thirsty and hungry for extra knowledge. Be careful what agenda you bring to the prayer room. Because God will turn your prayer meeting, he'll morph it into something you did not expect. Because why? His ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are higher than ours. And it's not about what we want. Amen. Didn't Tamil a man? She said, take me to the king, not to Burger King. It's not have it your way. 
take me to the king. Not to Burger King, amen. This is not have it your way. Anybody in here understand the struggle and the reality that our fight in this flesh is, God, not my will, but your will, your way, your timing, your placement, your position, your desire. I want what you want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He hears me when I pray. Hallelujah. We serve a God that has ears that can stoop down to our darkest gutter. And he can hear us like nobody else can hear us. Hallelujah. Anybody in here can testify today. You can look back and almost break out in a cold sweat when you think about that season where you almost gave up. You can think about that season where you almost ruined your whole entire life. But God, in his infinite love, he stooped down and he heard my voice, my voice, my cry. Hallelujah. 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 We ought not be hungrier for revelation and knowledge and understanding more than we're hungrier, hungry for a touch from him. Anybody in the house this morning? We're walking around with eggheads in the spirit realm. We need to walk around with bigger hearts. I long for a touch. I long for a God that will hear me out. I long for a God that will love me enough to chastise and ignore me when I need to be ignored. Hallelujah. The salvation of the Lord is not what he bestows upon us only. Sometimes it's about what we, he withholds from us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, he hears me. There's a difference between a God that hears you and a God that answers you. He is not, we treat him, we live in the information age, and we treat him like a database. Give me my answer. I'll call on you when I need you. Y'all remember Radio Shack? You got questions, we got answers. We can turn to Google for answers. I can go hit up some nice people in the human resources office if I need answers. Sometimes it's not about getting what we ask for. It's about him changing us. Hallelujah. If people don't feel like they're heard, they're going to flip out. Frustration of feeling misunderstood will cause you to do silly stuff. Some of y'all are shaking your heads because you almost popped off before. He is a God that will hear us when nobody else will hear us. We have a quote. Someone helped me last night with the quote. Uh, Children ought to be seen and not heard. And they grow up in homes. Nobody ever listened to them. They grow up to be the next Columbine shooter. Nobody ever stops to listen to them. They don't know where to go to be heard. Minority groups are frustrated. I, nobody hears me. And there's somebody here today, you feel like nobody hears you. Your best friend doesn't know how to listen to you. Your loved ones don't know how to hear. Then nobody understands. I'm here with great news for you. There is a God. Hallelujah. And when everybody else has disappeared, he shows up in your prayer room. And how do you know he heard you? Because he'll touch you. And something miraculous will happen. He is not a goodie bag of answers. He's not a genie in a bottle. He's not a magician. But he is the real source of everything that is. And he has ears that can stoop. Hallelujah. 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 There is something about just being heard. Who in here has ever been in pain and you didn't? Sometimes people will give you an answer and actually ruin it. You're going through a tough time. You lost a love and they come up and they, they feel the burden of their little precious heart to give you a word. I don't need a word right now. Let me go ahead and process what I'm going through. And I'll process it with God. Sometimes we need to digest and process what we're going through with him. All the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Somebody say, he hears me. Last night, uh, Brother Hughes brought up the woman and adultery and that image of Jesus stooping down. I've been looking at that verse, and he brought it up. Not only did he bring up that narrative, but he talked about God ignoring. Jesus ignored them. It says, as though he did not hear. That means he heard them, and he's playing them. Hallelujah. He can play me any day. Give me what I really need, not what I want. Hallelujah. The Bible says that everybody left his presence with conviction, a convicted conscience. Just being in his presence will fix you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants to take us from asking for an escape from the storm to asking for an escape in the storm. God is taking us from asking him to fill me with joy and happiness to asking him to just feel the pain and sorrow I'm going through. Somebody say, he hears me. He's going to take us from asking him to give me presence, give me things, to saying, let me into your presence. He's going to take us from asking him to fight all of our battles to saying, God, I need you to prepare me to be a soldier and in warfare, uh, effective in my warfare. We're going to go from final product, desiring the final product. God, I'm stressing out. Where should I go? I need the final product, final destination, to telling God, thank you for just being with me on the journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to go from asking for clarity. Oh, give me clarity, God. I can't see. That's where your faith develops. Hallelujah. When it's dark and there's uncertainty all around you, that's an opportunity to grow your faith. I wish I had a witness early on in an apostolic church on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 John 5, 14. Right, real fast, last verse. 1 John 5, 14. Somebody say, he hears me. He hears. Hallelujah. Anybody ever talk to somebody and you knew not a word had entered their ear? He's not going to do that to you. As a matter of fact, he is such a good listener. He knows what you need before you even ask. He already knows. In closing, you guys may stand. How many are thankful for God that hears you? I just want to provoke someone today to start looking at your prayer time as an agendaless time of development. Does that even make sense? 14, and this is the confidence, somebody say confidence, that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he what? He what? Verse 15. And if we know that he what? Whatever we ask, go ahead and get confident. When it happens, there will be no surprise. Because my faith was released when I asked him. I know he hears me when I ask. I know he hears me when I'm in pain. The Bible says he can actually hear your affliction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody thankful for a God who heard us when we were lost in our sins? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knows better than we do. He knows better than we do. Brother Emery used to use this story. He would say that a little boy and his mother were in a little shop, and the, the store, owner, store owner asked the little kid, he said, you can have all the candy. You can reach your little hand into that candy jar, and you can have all the candy you can grab. And the little boy would not do it, and his mom was like, what's wrong with you? Get your candy. And after the store owner did it for him, he reached his hand into the candy jar and he grabbed a big handful of candy, gave it to the mom. They went on their way. And the mom asked the son, he said, she said, why didn't you grab that candy when you had the opportunity? He said, his hands are bigger. Hallelujah. He knows what we need, when we need, how we need, where we need it, with who we need it. He knows already, but I'm so thankful. He is a God that hears. 
and understands. Hallelujah. Won't you clap your hands and shout unto heaven?